Saturday, August 28th, right-wing political commentator and radio host Glenn Beck gathered prominent leaders from the Tea Party movement, including former Vice President nominee Sarah Palin, to speak at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. August 28th also marked the 47th anniversary of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, held in the same location. The Reverend Al Sharpton organized a march titled Reclaim the Dream to provide a counter view. Tea Party leader Glenn Beck took the stage by about 10.15 a.m. to the roar of the crowd. Starting with the Pledge of Allegiance and a rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, tears were seen coming from many Beck fans' joyous eyes. This document is what it's all about. It's what keeps us free. So people, please, please stand up for our Constitution and what's right. Said Jenny Bywater from High Room, Utah, when asked about her biggest political concerns. Bywater and a group of fellow senior citizens borrowed money from family and friends to make the pilgrimage to the Beck event. They brought with them several hundred pro-American buttons which they planned to sell to be able to pay their travel debt. Her pride in the event was rooted in her love of country and faith. This kind of a concept of bringing people together, realizing we have to get God back into our country. A lot of this crazy stuff started when we no longer could even pray for ourselves in our schools and events. Uh, we're not trying to impinge religion on anyone else. We're just saying, let us have ours. I'm kind of tired of those who don't believe making it so that we can't, that getting in our way of our rights. John Stahl, chairman of the Burks Tea Party from Burks, Pennsylvania, sat with his fellow Tea Party members towards the rear of the stage. His interest in the day's message was based on his interpretation of the Founding Fathers' faith. Well, I think it's a rededication of the principles that founded this country, including that the first thing that we ever did was that is to uh, invoke God. Wrapped in the Gadsden flag with his face painted black and yellow to match, Andreas Vitacunas from Fairfax, Virginia, wanted to make sure passerbys understood where his allegiances lied. They said no signs, but they didn't say anything about face paint. Calling himself one of the most politically charged folks in attendance, he still had hope for compromise in a polarized political environment. You know, with luck, everyone will be reminded of a common ground and, and the common elements that it doesn't matter who we are politically, we're all Americans, and we should just sit down and discuss our problems rationally and, you know, stop playing the finger-pointing game and the name-pointing game. Costume wearing was commonplace at the event. Paul Wheeler from Indianapolis, Indiana, came in full colonial attire and sometimes drifted into his historical alter ego, John Blair, a signer of the U.S. Constitution. Uh, I walked 200 years to get here today. I want to know what you all have done with our republic. Wheeler went on to suggest the Restoring Honor event would not be the Tea Party's last large public gathering. We're going to continue to have these rallies and tea parties until D.C. gets it. And uh, as long as there continues to be a snakes in a den of thieves and a den of snakes, we're going to stay, continue having these until they slither over our charcoal bodies. Jim Revere came from Fort Washington, Maryland in a replica Captain America costume. Waving his father's Marine Corps flag, he made his mission clear. Save the country, family, God, country, constitution, and stop Marxist communist takeover from the executive department, the Congress, and the Senate. Tell the Republicans to do their job and tell the Democrats to shape up or ship out. Folks without costumes were just as passionate about their devotion to Beck's message. Kevin Davis brought his family from Ridgeville, Indiana to D.C. and arrived at one in the morning the night before the event. His two young daughters held a vintage World War II flag they had picked up at a flea market along the way. He believed the event would leave an imprint on everyone for years to come. I think it's going to be a new start, you know. But, uh, my kids are going to remember this the rest of their life, you know. It's the Woodstock of the 21st century, is what I think it is. I think it's going to change the world. Protests against Beck during the rally were small but visible. Ben Thalen, who lived in D.C. just a few blocks away, expressed disgust over the Tea Party's use of historical figures and documents. I want to protect the Constitution. These people wrap themselves in the Constitution every chance they get. Uh, they quote Jefferson every chance they get. If Jefferson was for one thing, it was freedom of religion. And at this very moment in New York, they're trying to deny people their First Amendment right of freedom of religion. Thalen's homemade sign, a small piece of construction paper with It's Because of the First Amendment that Glenn Beck can spew his filth, scrawled in Sharpie, was ripped out of his hands by an elderly woman in the middle of our interview. Beck had told those in attendance not to bring signs to the event. Mara Berger, down from Trenton, New Jersey, witnessed the assault and was shocked by the action. Oh, it was very scary. It was an older woman who you couldn't imagine to be fighting anybody, run and attack our friends and say, no signs, no signs, but they have their t-shirts, so what's the fucking difference? The Restoring Honor event went on until about 1 o'clock under the blaring D.C. sun. 
At about two, Al Sharpton's Reclaim the Dream march made its way down Independence Avenue, just feet away from the blank Fox News jumbotron. In a press release from Sharpton, the Reverend said Tea Party members and allied conservatives were trying to break the national stance on justice and in turn break the crux of what the civil rights movement symbolized and what Dr. King fought and literally died for. The march, which stretched about 15 city blocks, was Sharpton's answer to Beck's rally. Many walked arm in arm, chanting or yelling slogans in support of social justice and equality. Fred Mass from White Plains, New Jersey, marched towards the front of the crowd. He saw the march as a chance to pay back social activists of the past. Once in a lifetime chance, baby. Bring the dream back. huh? Somebody got to pay it away for the youngsters coming behind us. Somebody paid away for me, I got to pay it away for others. He stayed positive when asked about the Glenn Beck rally, though he disagreed with the views of the event. Everybody got a right to speak their mind. It'd be better if everybody speak on one accord for the right reasons, but it's still America and it's a free country. Kimberly Mellon brought her teenage son Mark to the event. While her reasons for attending were unclear at first, upon arrival she believed she was helping a more positive cause. I think I had a lot of confusion as to exactly why I wanted to come. I know I wanted to honor Martin Luther King and his dream. I was motivated by Glenn Beck's negativity, and I think there's too much of that in America. And right now I'm looking at our middle class struggling, and I think we all need help, and I think we have to be there for each other. And I don't like hatred, and that's all I hear from someone like him. Both days' events flowed smoothly with no negative interactions between rallies. Police refused to confirm the numbers in attendance for either event. Don't teach our children hate! Don't teach our children hate!